It's uh, all in for poker, for online poker in Congress today. Uh, today, the House will vote on whether to overturn legislation outlawing online poker in the U.S. With more on that and what it would mean for poker, let's bring in the winner of the 2004 World Series of Poker, Greg Raymer. Greg, a pleasure. Thanks very much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Well, thank you. Glad to help. You are in favor, I believe, of allowing online poker, which is disallowed at the moment. Make your case, please. Well, actually, I don't agree that it's disallowed at the moment. Uh, the UIGEA, the law that Frist jammed through on the back of the Port Security Act a few years ago, says that banks cannot engage in financial transactions with illegal online gambling sites, but it doesn't say what those are, and there's no other federal laws that make uh, online games like poker illegal. Oh, so, so if it's a little ambiguous, this vote today would make it not ambiguous. It would specifically allow True. online poking, uh, poker, and that's what you want. Absolutely. I mean, I'm a libertarian. I think that adult Americans should be able to do anything they want that doesn't harm another person. Mm -hmm. And certainly when I play online poker, I'm not harming anyone else. I might be winning their money, but they have a fair chance at winning my money also. Now, it would be taxed, I take it, if it becomes fully legal, above board. There's a tax involved, right? Exactly. I mean, that's the real advantage of this legislation. Right now, you know, it's ambiguous, but personally, I believe online poker is legal. But certainly because of this ambiguity, all the sites that offer this service are located outside the U.S., and there's no U.S. regulation of the industry. So the Frank Bill, plus especially the Campbell Amendment, this would put in a lot of consumer protection and make it fully regulated, licensed, and taxed by the American government. Greg, like many other things, we saw explosive growth in online uh, gambling and really just poker in general over about a 10, 12 year period. Settled down a little bit here over the last couple of years. This law being passed, I mean, is this sort of the, the way for the next step up in terms of poker in this country, in terms of popularity? Oh, well, certainly, you know, if we get rid of this ambiguity, there's lots of Americans that think it's illegal and that's why they don't participate. If the ambiguity is removed, I would expect a lot of those individuals to start playing more online poker and live poker in their local card rooms. So I would expect a new poker boom if this legislation were to pass. I just have to get back to the tax though. If you, if you start having to pay personal income tax on your winnings, uh, and if there's some kind of uh, government fee involved, wouldn't that put people off? I mean, if you can do it now well, on overseas You have to pay taxes pay tax. now. You do? I mean, I, I have to pay income tax on every dollar I win online. Um, you know, that's uh, an issue of federal tax law. It has nothing to do with yes. um, the legality or illegality of the activity. If, if I were to sell drugs illegally, I owe income tax on that income as well. Yeah, but a lot of people um, don't, don't expect pay those people to pay it. But, but they don't Well, yeah, pay that's it. the thing. You know, I mean, you make it above board, make it totally legal, totally overt, the government regulates it, then you do pay it. But that's the argument, Stuart. I mean, you get people like Greg and Annie Duke out there for this. It, the government could collect a lot of money on this because there would be a better reporting system. Because as he said, you do have to report your gambling winning, sir. A quick, a quick question, Greg, if I may. <laughs> we, we had some video of you winning a gigantic stack of money there uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it, when you won the world <laughs> championship there. I take it you had to pay tax on that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I couldn't have hidden that even if I'd wanted to. I mean, it was <laughs> obvious public knowledge. But, you know, I mean, I was a lawyer for 12 years, and, and I understand the consequences of breaking the tax laws. I, I think you're, you're probably better off breaking the normal criminal laws than the tax laws if you're trying to get away with something. Well said, sir. Greg <laughs> Raymer, thank you very much for joining us, sir. We appreciate you being with us. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much.